All right, we'll get started and continue with our verse-by-verse -verse study, starting out in the book of Matthew. And we'll pick up where we left off in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. And it's Tuesday, August 14th, 2018. Where we are is in Matthew 10, verse 16. And we read where we picked up from where we were last week. Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. This is how we're starting out this week. And of course, we remember last week where the Lord sent out, he commissioned, and uh, we read off the list of the little flock, uh, the 12 disciples. And he was teaching them pretty much how to survive as they go out, gave them kingdom instructions on how to survive as they reach out with the gospel of the kingdom to unbelieving Israel. And so he's going to continue on with those kingdom instructions this week. And he's going to tell them to expect persecution uh, as they go out to unbelieving Israel. And he's going to tell them pretty much to you know, re remain in the faith and, up and uh, you know, continue to preach as uh, the persecution will no doubt come. And this is what it's you know, pretty brief rundown, but is what it's going to be, continue to be like in this, uh, this week of uh, the book of Matthew. So we'll open up in a word of prayer and continue our study in uh, Matthew chapter 10. Uh, Lord, we're thankful for this day of grace where we can study and open your word, rightly divided, have it work effectually in us as we continue to learn not only from the benefits of the revelation of the mystery, but also from prophecies so that we can learn from all of your word and benefit from all of it so that we can better see soul saved as ambassadors of your grace. Amen. Amen. So we see in verse 16, what we're seeing here, he says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. So we're seeing that the uh, he's referring to unbelieving Israel as wolves. And we've seen that before where uh, he's they've been called uh, serpents, referring to the Pharisees and Sadducees in uh, Matthew chapter 3. So you see the the opinion, the not the opinion, but how the Lord is referring to unbelieving Israel. They're wolves, they're, they're serpents, they're, you know, this is who you're going out to, Israel, the little flock, uh, the, tw the twelve. You're going out into these uh, unbelievers who are, who need to be that channel of blessing in the prophecy program, but yet they're, they're pretty much, you know, serpents, they're wolves, they're, they're, they're pretty tough, they're a pretty tough crowd, as, as we know from the end of the book of Matthew. But he tells them, uh, he sends them forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. He says, be therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. And so he's going to tell them that. Uh, to be wise as serpents, um, pretty much everyone wants to kill a serpent, therefore the serpent itself, the literal snake, has to be you know, wise on its feet, pretty much. Or Not that they have feet, but they've got to be pretty much wise. Uh, but he's, he's telling them to be wise as serpents, you know, no, no, in other words, to avoid uh, danger where they can find it. You know, they're already being sent out to a dangerous, on a dangerous mission. But uh, they need to be wise as they go out and do this. Wise as serpents and harmless as doves. You know, from Matthew chapter 5, it talks about how they shouldn't, uh, you know, recompense violence with violence. Uh, it talks about things like that but that they should be harmless as doves as they go out to this crowd, uh, to unbelieving Israel. So the little flock is to go out and be harmless as doves, yet wise as serpents. And so we see this from the opening, just the beginning of um, where we're studying tonight in, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 16. So we're starting up there, and then we see in verse 17, he says, But uh, beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. So, as we continue to see this, we're seeing the Lord uh, say how, what they will do. And he's saying, beware of men, for this is what they will do. As the Lord um, you know, looks forward ahead to, uh, towards you know, the events of the future, you know, the tribulation, Daniel's 70th week, uh, the events of the book of Revelation. He's looking forward. You know, ahead, and he's telling them what's go, what to, what they can expect, what the little flock can expect, which is persecution. 
And he's saying this in verse 17. He's saying, Beware of men, for they will deliver you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. We know that all the way from Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, that the synagogues, under the power of the Antichrist, become so uh, horrific uh, that the Lord calls them the synagogues of Satan. They're, not, no, they're no longer uh, the synagogues of the Lord Jesus Christ. If you look at um, Revelation chapter 2, verse 9, you'll see that uh, they're no longer what God considers to be Jews, you know, Jews doing things that Jews should do in a Jewish synagogue. So in Revelation 2, verse 9, he says to the little flock church, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So of course that's unbelieving Israel, of course that's in the tribulation, but what he's saying as we go back to Matthew chapter 10 verse 17, he's saying that they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues. So this is something that will occur as the Lord looks ahead to these future events and he's explaining these are things that will happen. You know, little flock, they will beat you, they will scourge you, they will bring you ahead to their councils. And if you remember, we saw a little, a couple of verses talking about the councils how there are councils that, you know, meetings that uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees have. And if you look back, Matthew chapter 5, verse 22, we studied this a couple of uh, lessons ago. Matthew chapter 5, verse 22, what we saw here, it says, uh, But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. You know, so they, they had councils. And he's saying these councils are only going to be twisted and turned into, into things where they're going to think it's okay to beat the little flock for, for going out and preaching the gospel of the kingdom. They're going to take, they're going to take them into their synagogues, which is you know, the religious areas of Israel, and their councils, which is the, uh, the civic areas of Israel. And no matter where they go, they're going to say it's okay to, to beat up on the little flock of Israel, persecute them, just for preaching the words of the Lord Jesus Christ according to prophecy. And so it's going to be an okay thing according to the religious rulers, not, ac not according to God, to beat the little flock of Israel, to persecute them. So we see that in verse 17. So he says, uh, Deliver uh, you up to the councils, and they will scourge you in their synagogues. And in verse 18, it says, And ye shall be brought uh, before governors and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. And so we see this uh, being mentioned um, uh, pretty much verse 17 and 18. You can see this take place in the book of Acts. As you read the book of Acts, you'll see verse 17 and verse 18 take place in various, various areas. But what you're seeing here in verse 18, it says, And ye shall be brought uh, before governors and kings for my sake, uh, for a testimony against them. So as they're brought forth, they're brought forth for preaching the gospel of the kingdom and doing that which is right according to God in the, pro in the prophetic program. And they use that as an opportunity to speak about the Lord as they're brought forth. This is their opportunity. They turn what would normally be a criminal matter to turn it into an opportunity. And so this is what's going on. You, know, you see this in the book of Acts. So we see that in verse 17. And uh, we see that also in verse 18. Um, uh, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. And so in verse 19, it says, but when they deliver you up, take no thought how or what ye shall speak. Uh, for it shall be given you in that same hour what ye shall speak. And so you're seeing this take place. This is also something that takes place in the book of Acts. If you look at Acts chapter 6 and verse 10, for example. Acts chapter 6 and verse 10. This will just be one example. So 
what we see here Uh, what we're seeing here, it says, uh, and they were not able uh, to resist. This is uh, you know, talking about Stephen. Um, and what we're seeing here, he says, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit uh, by which he spake. And so we see this take place over you know, there in Acts chapter 6, verse uh, 7. I'm sorry, verse 10. And then also in Acts chapter 7, uh, that whole thing, that whole speech that Stephen speaks before he gets you know, killed and murdered, you'll see this also, you know, taking place in verse 19. It says, But when they deliver you up, take no thought what ye shall speak. Now, of course, if you're using the book of Matthew for your doctrine today, which we know we're not to do, it wouldn't make any sense, you would read this and you would think that uh, maybe this is something you're supposed to do. If you go forth and you go to evangelize, or you go to speak, or you go to preach, or you go to do whatever it is you go to do, maybe your uh, direction and instruction is to obey Matthew chapter 10, verse 19, which means uh, when you go forth and you're in some sort of uh, persecution or trouble or whatever, uh, you're, you're to take no thought how or what you're, you're supposed to speak, but it'll just be given to you by the Holy Spirit. You know, but but you see that if you do that, it's going to be a mess because we know our we know we have different instructions in this day and age. We know Second Timothy two fifteen, we're to study to show thyself approved unto God, and that we need to know what it is we need to say so that we can be ready when uh, and give every man an answer and uh, be ready to give every man an answer according to uh, the Bible rightly divided. Now we know with uh, the Holy Spirit. And we're seeing it has different ministries for different dispensations. And so we're seeing this especially here in Matthew chapter 10, verse 19, as it plays out in Acts chapter 6 and Acts chapter 7. So uh, we saw that here. And so in verse 20, it says, For it is not ye that speak, but the Spirit of your Father which speaketh in you. And so we see that from verse 20. And um, if we can look at this also, you'll see uh, in uh, Say Mark, uh, I believe it's Mark, verse 12, 36. Mark 12, 36. And let me see. Yes, what we're seeing here in Mark 12, 36, how, how, uh, even in the Old Testament before Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there are people that speak by the Holy Ghost. And so you're seeing in verse 36, it says, For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. So you're seeing uh, King David himself speak, and it says, By the Holy Ghost. So by the Holy Ghost, King David speaks. And, you know, the whole Bible is Holy Spirit inspired, but you're seeing here how King David speaks by the Holy Ghost, and you're seeing how uh, Stephen speaks by the Holy Ghost, Acts chapter 6, and so how the Holy Ghost has a, has a purpose for Israel, and how it plays out in prophecy. Uh, and you see, even with the twelve, when they're brought before to be persecuted, they're not to worry, they're not to take no thought for the Spirit of their Father, the, Ho the Holy Spirit is to come forth and, and you know, kind of put the words in their mouth and tell them what to say. You know, that's not us. We need to study. We need to have the understanding built into our inner man to know what to say, to understand what the issues are, and we have to learn and grow and understand. So, we see that in verse 20. And so, moving, moving on, and uh, then we see, in verse 21, a continuation of what the twelve can expect as their commission to go forth and commission to go forth with the gospel of the kingdom. And they're seeing that as persecution is going to happen to them and to those that follow them. Those are inside the little flock or part of the little flock. It says, And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and uh, the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. Now, the reason for that, as we'll continue to see 
as we studied in uh, the latter part of uh, Scripture, as well as what we're seeing here, is that there's going to be a time when the Antichrist comes and makes a deal with Israel. And so there's going to be some parts of Israel that say, well, this guy, he has to be the Messiah. There's going to be other parts of Israel that says, well, this guy, he's, he's the devil himself. So there's a complete divide in Israel. And there's going to be some that are against the Antichrist and want to join up with the little flock and uh, are completely against the Antichrist and everything he's doing. There's going to be some that say, well, the Antichrist, he, he's clearly God. He's, you know, and they're deceived. And, and he's clearly God. He has to be God. Everything he says we're going to do because he, he must be God. So there's this absolute division. And so when the little flock comes about preaching the gospel of the kingdom and going forth to do what they need to do according to the words of the Lord Jesus Christ and the prophetic program, uh, you'll see there in verse 21, you'll see all that division. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. So they're going to be doing uh, what they think is right by obeying the Antichrist or by going against them. But there's going to be uh, literally everybody fighting against everybody. And then that's not even adding on the events of the book of the Revelation. You're going to have families literally tearing each other apart while you've got locusts and hurricanes and hail and, and uh, just everything being completely torn apart and blown away. And the gospel of the kingdom will still be going out. And then by that time, you'll have the everlasting gospel going out. Uh, so it's, it's going to be a totally different scene than uh, you know, in the future. But nonetheless, this is what God is telling the twelve uh, the little flock uh, disciples what to expect. So, and so in verse 22 it continues. It says, And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved. And of course we're talking about he that endureth unto the end of the tribulation shall be saved. But you see one verse here, you see this verse. It says, He that endureth to the end shall be saved. So of course, one possibility when you're going out and talking to somebody of a different denomination or faith or whatever, they could go to Matthew chapter 10 and verse uh, 22. And they could say, well, the Lord Jesus Christ said himself, He that endureth unto the end, the same shall be saved. So if I want to be saved, I need to obey Matthew chapter 10, verse 22. Because it says right there, saved. So and if I want to be saved, I need to endure unto the end. Because it says so right there in, the, in those words. And that's what that's the argument they'll use. That's what they'll run with because they don't know how to rightly divide. They don't put the context. They don't put the verses into the context. And so they'll use this verse because they see the word saved. And who who doesn't you know want to be saved if they don't understand or if they do understand halfway even what the issues are. So we'll see this in uh, Matthew chapter ten verse twenty two. Uh, that, that the twelve, the little flock, will be hated of all men uh, for uh, the Lord Jesus Christ's namesake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. That's endured to the end of the tribulation, through all the persecution, through the Antichrist and his uh, ruling and his reigning and, and all the issues that are going to happen. And you can see a little bit more of this. We go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, and look at verse 4. You know, it starts out with deceit. The disciples are talking to him. And we see in Matthew chapter 24, verse 4, it says, And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. And so many shall come up in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. So deception is going to be a big issue, which is going to cause all those to follow the Antichrist and to follow his words rather than the Lord's words and to cause that division where brother turns against brother and children against the parents and, and, and so on and so forth that we're seeing in Matthew chapter 10 now. But then as we continue and look at uh, Matthew chapter 24 verse 13, you'll see the same thing that we just read. And Matthew 24 verse 13 says, But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. So, 
that they, if whoever, you know, whoever they are, if they're reading Matthew chapter 10, and then they read Matthew chapter 24, if they just read the book of Matthew and they see the word saved, they're, you know, if they're Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John red letter Christians, they're going to read this and they're going to say, well, it says right there in the book of Matthew, not only in Matthew chapter 10, but also in Matthew chapter 24, that I need to endure until the end. And of course, no one's going through the tribulation today and nobody in the dispensation of grace is going to. They may wonder what the end, the end of what? At the end of their life or the end of their career or the end of this week or the end of, at the end of what? Because it's talking about the tribulation, which nobody's currently in, that nobody in the in the body of Christ is going to go through. So they've got to make up in their own agenda what the what the end of what they're going to be going through the end of. So everyone will make something up to, and they'll probably say the end of their life or whatever. So so you see that there. And then when you get to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 24, it says, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Uh, behold, uh, I have told you before. And of course we're seeing this in Matthew chapter 10. So deception is, is a huge part of what is going to be happening in the tribulation. With the Antichrist, his his uh, his, his uh, followers, and everyone that's going to be doing it, it's going to be a part of, of deception and lying and causing division and everything else. And so, we, as we go back into uh, verse twenty-one, uh, actually verse twenty-two, I'm sorry. And it says, "And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that endureth to the end shall be saved." And in verse 23, what we see here, as we're uh, continuing on, he says, But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye to another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. And so again, he's talking about that uh, future time. And uh, as they go out with the gospel and with uh, the, the power that they've been given, you know, in, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 2, as they go out, he says, he says to them in verse 23, But when they persecute you in this city, flee ye into another. So they're not to go out and, and essentially play the hero. They're not to go out and say, well, you know, I'll, I'll jump on the grenade to save the battalion, so to speak. Um, they're there to just, everyone wants to get up and flee. Everyone wants to, to you know, survive as much as they can. They're not to, to, to show off what they can do or what they can't do. You know, keep that, uh, you know, humbleness of mind and to go out and preach the kingdom and do what they can. If, if they get killed, they get killed. That's one thing. But they're not to invite, you know, martyrdom. You know, they're to do uh, their work as uh, in the prophetic program. So, but they're not to invite violence to themselves. They're not looking for it. They're not craving it. They're not saying, well, you know, I want a you know, trophy on the wall or something like that over my corpse. It's something where, you know, if, if they get persecuted, they're, they're to get up and flee. They're to get up to go to the next city. So, we see that in verse 23. He says, flee you to, into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. And so we know that uh, in verse 23. Uh, until the Son of Man become, that's where we saw this in Matthew 24, in verse 14. Uh, when, until the Son of Man become, that's going to be where we see here in 24, 14. It says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So that's what we're seeing Matthew 24. And that's, that's usually a big chapter that a lot of people like to apply to themselves thinking that that must be the end of the world, and this is uh, information of, that we can apply for today, and put the newspaper headlines and match it up with Matthew chapter 24, and it just, it's just not going to work. Uh, this is information for uh, different people at different times and a different dispensation in a prophetic program. It is not going to fit for us in the dispensation of grace today. But nonetheless, 
as we see in verse uh, 23, um, till the Son of Man become, that's Daniel's 70th week, uh, Matthew 24, 14. Uh, that was talking about. So, so we see that in verse 23. It says, uh, For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. And then verse 24, he says that the, uh, the disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. And so this is just a basic, uh, it's pretty much self-explanatory, saying that uh, the disciple is, is not going to be getting any less or any more than what the Lord who was there before him went through. And so, uh, as, as the next verse explains even deeper, he says, It is enough for the disciple that he be as his master, and the servant as his Lord. Uh, if they have called the master of, uh, of the house Beelzebub, how much more shall they call them of his, house, of his household? So you're seeing this uh, take place, if you look at Matthew chapter 12, in verse 24, this is where this is all going to take place there. And what we see here, uh, this is where they call the Lord, uh, inciting him with Beelzebub, or lining him up with it. It says, when the Pharisees heard it, uh, they said, this fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, uh, the prince of the devils. Because he was casting out devils, and they said, "Well, it must the only way that the Lord Jesus, or they wouldn't call him the Lord Jesus, they didn't believe he was the Messiah." But unbelieving Israel, the religious leaders, the Pharisees, when they saw the Lord casting out devils, they said, "Well, the only way he could be casting out devils is if the devil himself is allowing it to happen." So they were so blinded by uh, the fact that they wanted to remain in power, they wouldn't believe the signs, miracles, and wonders that were happening right in front of them. And so, what the Lord is saying to uh, the Twelve in Matthew chapter 10, as he gives further instruction on, on how to survive, how to go out there, what to expect, what kind of persecutions are going to be happening, what to do when you're persecuted, and he's giving them kind of a playbook. Here's what you do. Here's how you go around and about. Here's how you survive. Here's how you get through these things. He says in verse uh, 25, uh, and a servant as his, as his uh, Lord. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebub, how much uh, more shall they call them of his household? So he's saying, get ready, because if they're calling me Beelzebub, if they're calling me, they're not believing the things that I'm doing, and they're calling me names, and they're persecuting me, uh, and you're my disciples, Israel, get ready, because it's it's you're doing everything right, and they're still going to be, you know, badgering you and battering you upside down and left. So, you see, and, and this is why he says that in verse 24, the disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. So, it makes a good lesson. It's a good lesson for us to understand. We It's a good principle. It's a good lesson for us to understand as well. But, we're seeing this take place in the prophetic program as they go out with the gospel of the kingdom. So we see that in verse 25. Going into verse 26, he says, Fear them not, therefore, uh, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be uh, known. So, as is going forth, and, he, and we can see this from Mark's account, and we can see this from Luke's account. If you look at Mark chapter 4, verse 22, Mark also has, a, has the same explanation, the eyewitness account of this as well. Uh, Mark chapter 4, verse 22. And he says, For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but that it uh, should come abroad. And then he says, If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And then if we look also at Luke chapter 8, verse 17. This is Luke's account of the same thing. Luke chapter 8, verse 17. And what he says here, he says, For nothing is secret, and I shall not be made manifest, neither anything uh, hid, but shall not be known, and come abroad. Uh, take ye therefore how ye hear, for whosoever hath, to him hath been... Uh, 
to him uh, shall be given. And so, and so we see the different eyewitness accounts of this same uh, principle being taught. Uh, here in Matthew uh, chapter 10, verse 26, where he's teaching them, you know, have no fear, be bold in the kingdom proclamation in the gospel of the kingdom. So in verse 26, he's saying, fear, fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, and hid that shall not be known. So he's, he's talking about, uh, essentially, little flock, you'll know all the teachings you know, that, are, that are to come. Um, you know, don't worry if there's if there's something they don't understand or they don't know, and they're not to worry. Everything everything will be revealed. Uh, we know that from Jeremiah thirty one thirty one through thirty four. That's the uh, New Testament, uh, you know, promise to Israel. And so, if you look at that for just a moment, Jeremiah thirty one thirty one. Now, uh, the point to make in that is uh, going to be mentioned here. And what we're seeing is uh, mainly from verse 26, where they're saying that uh, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. They're gonna they're gonna be able to understand uh, based on that, that you know, Holy Ghost unction that you read about in the uh, Hebrew the, the latter epistles that they're gonna be able to know uh, all things or not omniscience, but they're gonna be able to understand what what God's will and purpose and plan are all about through the uh, understanding of the New Testament, their New Testament. And so it says in verse 31, in Jeremiah 31, 31, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, but I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of uh, Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was a husband unto them, saith the Lord. But this shall be the covenant uh, that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts, and write it in their hearts, and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sins no more. So they're going to they're gonna understand as, as they get the... Uh, New Testament uh, that they're going to have, as we see from verse 26, there's going to be nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. Everything will, will come to a, you know understanding. You'll see that Acts 2, you'll see that in all these other uh, parts in the book of Acts. So, this will be up and coming with the book of Acts, and Matthew 24 lines up with Revelation, so all of this the Lord is saying is up ahead. But they start what we're seeing in Matthew chapter 10 with their uh, initial commission in Matthew chapter 10, the little flock, the 12. So we see that in verse 26. And then in verse 27, what I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in light. And what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. And so he's just essentially telling them um, uh, to be bold in what they're saying, what, what they're hearing, what they're understanding, what the Lord's telling them, for them to go out and speak openly. And he says, what I tell you in darkness, that is speaking in the light. And if you look at Luke chapter 8, verse 10, uh, Luke chapter 8, verse 10, what it essentially reads here, is pretty much explaining that they're there to know all these things. Uh, you know, according to the New Testament, we see here, uh, and he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. So later on, as the book of Matthew gets into more parabolic teachings, the little flock is going to understand what's going on, and all these kingdom mysteries are going to be, the Lord will speak in a crowd. And the Pharisees and the Sadducees are going to say, what is this guy talking about? But the little flock will uh, hear his words, and they'll have ears to hear and understand. And uh, it'll be known unto them who are, uh, you know, the little flock of Israel. So as we get into verse 27, I uh, to go back to it. He says, what I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in the light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye upon the housetops. So he's making sure that they go out and they further... Uh, 
make grandiose what the Lord is already teaching. So, and it says in verse uh, 28, and fear them not, uh, and fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear them which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. So, the uh, one thing that we can see from verse 28 is that the Lord talks about hell. There's there's a lot of different ministries that say, well, I don't believe in hell. The Lord never talks about hell. There's no such place as hell. Well, we see from Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, that the Lord is teaching the little flock, the, the twelve, and he tells them that, you know, fear. You know, don't, don't worry about those that just kill the body but can't kill the soul, but fear the one who can kill both the body and the soul and fill the soul in hell. So the Lord's making a point to mention there's a place called hell and it's real. So, we see this from verse 28. Uh, the point he's also saying is, you know, in, in Daniel's 70th week and in the time to come, there's going to be many enemies of Israel. You can see a list of enemies in Psalm 83. But the point of what's going to be happening is that he's saying, don't fear them. All they could do in their, in your, in their your worst day, Israel, is kill, you, kill the body, but not the soul. He's saying, rather, don't... Rather fear God and, and obey His commandments, uh, in the prophetic program at least, and um, fear God because He has the ability not only to kill the body, but also take the soul and throw that into hell. The, the enemies of Israel can't do that. Human enemies can't do that. Can't, can't take the soul and do anything with it. But God can. So, He makes a mention of this as He continues laying out the mission of uh, the disciples. You know, the commission and, and the information on, on how to do what they need to do, what to expect, and what to do when these things happen. We see this information pretty much laid out in Matthew chapter 10, um, verse uh, you know, 16 through 28. If you look at um, Psalm 119 and verse 120. Psalm 119 and verse 120. What we're going to see here is the type of uh, fear. And what we're seeing in, because uh, what we're closing on tonight is Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And you're saying, you know, fear not them which kill the body and are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both uh, soul and body in hell. This is uh, Psalm 119, verse 120. And we see here, it says, My flesh trembleth for fear of thee, and I am afraid of thy judgments. So we see King David talking about how he's, he's, he, his flesh trembleth for fear of, of God, and he's afraid of his judgments. So there's, there's a point where Israel is to understand God, God has every right to judge, and when he does, there's, there's a chance you have to throw the, the soul in hell. That's a, that's a dangerous thing. They need to understand, according to the prophetic program, what those issues are and how to follow God properly, what they need to do. So, uh, as we see that, and we'll close on here for tonight, we'll, we'll see that these are the uh, commission of the disciples. And so what we'll do is we'll pick up next week in Matthew chapter 10, verse 29, and we'll continue from there. And we'll stop here for tonight.